Craftopia just got hit with a huge update and is one of my favorites in a long time. So let's go through these patch notes and check out all of the new content. Now a quick disclaimer, this update is currently only for Steam as we're still waiting for Xbox to receive the seamless map update. However, all of this content will eventually make it to Xbox as well. But let's do this. Newly added content. You can now accept quests from NPCs in Unifel Desert. As the patch note states, NPCs in the desert village will now have quests for you. Added an option to set the weather in creative mode. So if you head to your creative world settings, you will now have a new drop down box allowing you to set the weather of your choice. I love this change and personally would love settings like this in survival as I hate the weather. The dungeon of Unifel Desert has been opened. It has some very unique puzzles inside including the return of Paul the Pin from Legacy. And spoiler alert, it ends with a bone dragon. Partial release of the new biome Miasma Wetlands has been released. New age level, dungeon, shop, etc. will be released at a later date. A brand new biome. Miasma Wetlands is located just past the desert and is a poison biome sporting a cute little village, giant mushrooms and floating islands. It also sees the return of an OG boss, the Tyrant Snake. This island will also be how we progress to the lava biome in future updates. We have implemented a new vehicle, the minecart. The minecart can move at high speed on laid rails and can even jump. Laying rails can be done in the same way as pipelines. However, minecarts are vulnerable to attacks from enemies, so be careful where you place them. One of my favorite parts of this update and something I stated I would love in my top five things I want in seamless video. This is not only going to make a great mode of transportation, but also super fun for our events. We have implemented a new pipeline, the Sonic Pipeline. Items can be sent out much faster than regular pipelines. Now, I personally didn't notice much of a difference with these when I was testing them, and I think they may need some work, but eventually this change could be huge. We have implemented a new vehicle, combat helicopter. A powerful helicopter equipped with machine guns and missiles. That's right, an Apache helicopter has been added equipped with a working machine gun and missiles. We have implemented a new vehicle, the torpedo boat. It can fire torpedoes while moving at high speed on the water. It is also possible for multiple people to board by sitting at each gun turret. This new vehicle is awesome and a nice change to our usual vehicles. Not only can multiple people use this vehicle, but pre Previously, our best mode of transportation on the water was a simple fishing boat outside of the hoverboards or hoverbikes. We have implemented a new vehicle, Shark Hoverboard. Talking of hoverboards, well, this is a shark. A shark hoverboard. Probably the wackiest vehicle so far, but a really cool and fun touch. We have implemented a new vehicle, Motocross. It has a better running performance than a regular bike because it has a small turning radius and can jump. On to my favorite vehicle from this update the motocross bike. Not only is it rocking the Kazgang green, but this vehicle's movement is elite. It's fast, turns fast, wheelies when you boost, oh, and as they said, it can also jump. Only change I would like to see is the audio to sound more like a two-stroke motocross bike, if you know, you know. And I would like some fast air rotations to make it more fun and perhaps a trick button similar to the hoverboards. But either way, this is now my go-to. New weapons, submachine guns one to three, have been implemented. A gun that fires SMG bullets at high speed, making it effective in close range combat. Three new submachine guns with fast fire rate and gaining bigger mags as you go up the levels. With the first being 20 bullets, the second being 25 bullets, and the third being 30 bullets. We have implemented a clone breeding place, which is a high ranking breeding place. That's right, a new breeding machine. However, unlike the previous breeding facility, you only need one of each mob to begin the breeding process. You simply throw in the mob you need and it gets to cloning. It is much slower than a breeding facility, but more compact. And not having moving top pieces is huge for compact automations. We have implemented a new intermediate material, tempered glass, rare scrap parts, high performance electronic circuits, high performance engine, and chop ham armor. Most of these new materials are used for things such as the new helicopter and boat. We have implemented a new item, mithril, along with new mithril items, mithril ingot, mithril axe, mithril pickaxe, 
Mithril One-Handed Sword, Mithril Two-Handed Sword, Mithril Bow, Mithril Arrow, Mithril Shield, Mithril Spear, Mithril Magic Wand, and Mithril Sword. So new equipment with green colouring, and they all have really good stats. Added new furniture. You can craft it from the furniture crafting table. Log Table, Mushroom Desk, Jacko Big Shelter, Mushroom Parasol, Hanging Lantern, Toilet Paper Holder, Wall Hanging Towel, Pile of Red Fallen Leaves, Pile of Yellow Fallen Leaves, Log Stool, Stump Stool, Log Bench, Mushroom Stool, and Autumn Leaves Hanging Scroll. Now pretty much all of these items just came from Legacy, they've now just transitioned over to Seamless. We have implemented the Expert Potion Mixer, which is a high ranking potion mixer. So just like some of our other workbenches, we now have a more advanced version of the potion table. We have implemented a new item, Portable Portal. By placing it on the field, you can use it as a fast travel point. The number of units that can be installed will increase depending on the number of wedge towers that are repaired. Now this one is huge because it means you can now build a base anywhere. You don't need to be near a portal as you can just craft your own. However, at the time of making this video, I could not get one to stay on the map. It disappeared every time I put one down, so I think it may be bugged. Items Whetstone and Amulet have been added. The added items are as follows. Iron Whetstone, Iron Amulet, Golden Whetstone, Golden Amulet, Adamant Steel Whetstone, Adamant Steel Amulet, Mithril Whetstone, and Mithril Amulet. So even more accessories, which is just great. We can finally max out our builds. We have implemented enchantments that exert special effects when added to facilities. So now there are various enchantments that actually benefit builds. So for example, you could put one of these enchantments on one of your builds and it wouldn't take as much fire damage. A new powerful enemy, the Goblum, will appear. Cunning goblins are exploiting stone golems. By defeating them, you can obtain materials with special enchantments and accessories. So yes, a brand new boss and he is insane. A giant golem with three goblins on its back and one of those goblins throws molotovs. And as it states, you get special enchantments from these, such as the ones you can put on your builds. Merchant Smith has opened a shop in Sherber Iceberg and Unifel Desert. It seems that new weapons can be purchased depending on each biome. So as it says, the snow biome and the desert now have working shops and the range of weapons has been improved in each one. We have opened a new age, the age of scientific research. Along with this, you will be able to create new items. So you can progress to the next age and it will unlock new items as we've done since the start. And that's it for all the new available content. Now there are a bunch of other changes within this update from balance adjustments and bug fixes to even functional improvements such as giving a voice to the frog boss. But I'm not going to go through every one of these changes as there really is a lot and that would be quite boring. So I will leave a link in the top of the description if you wish to read for yourself. Now this update is fantastic. I love the new biome. I love all the new vehicles. However, when testing all this new stuff out, I really did notice that the optimization seems to only be getting worse. The game itself doesn't run terrible, but everything kind of looks terrible. There's so many things popping in in your screen at once. You basically have to have your nose pressed against things before it loads in. But it does concern me slightly that all of this awesome new content keeps getting added. Now, I do think it has improved in other areas. But right now, if it was completely up to me, I would say stop adding content content and fix everything. And I'm sure that's easier said than done, but a bunch of new content isn't going to make that any better. In fact, it will do the opposite. But regardless, I'm not a dev. I love this update and I still love Craftopia. It is just completely night and day when you play something like Power World and then you play Craftopia. Granted, Craftopia has a lot more content, but it's they're not even close in terms of optimization. But let me know what you think about this update. Either way, I am still going to be returning back to my main to complete all of the new content and we are also going to be returning to our open lobby event soon with something that is in the works that will be our biggest competition ever for more information on that soon i really hope you enjoyed this video please do drop a like and subscribe join the kaz gang discord all the links are down below if you didn't see i am back live streaming every single day now covering all different survival games craftopia power world absolutely everything but of course when it comes to updates like on craftopia i will always cover the them as well. But that's it from me. I'm on to the next one. Peace!